Since their launch in 2015, several thousand Coxalps have been sold, and they are used by Coxes at all levels, from novices right up to internationals. Last season alone, Coxalps were used by the winners of the Men's and Women's Championship 8 at the IRA Championships, the Men's Boat Race winners, the Bronze Medal winners in the Men's 8 at the World Rowing Championships, and the winners of the Men's Championship 8 event at the Head of the Charles. The Coxorb was developed because we realised that existing products didn't have the features and functions more experienced coxes wanted. They often had to take voice recording and GPS devices into the boat. However, we also realised that some programmers wouldn't want all these extra features, so we created four versions to cater for coxes at every level. The Coxorb wasn't our first attempt at making a coxing amplifier. Back in 2005, we designed and fully tooled the Active Voice. However, after a great deal of work, we realised that the electronics were overly complex and that some features were impractical. The design incorporated a holder in the boat that the unit slotted into and automatically connected to the boat speakers. It also had a custom data network that would have allowed a speed sensor and power meters to be added in the future. It also integrated a novel slide switch to make the controls more user-friendly. As well as GPS and voice recording, we also wanted to make it possible for coxes to angle the unit towards them. As many of you know, this can be a real problem in front steered boats. We therefore came up with the idea of the spherical back, which we mocked up using an oversized dog ball and went on to patent. Following that, we then started looking at the visual aspects of the design and possible screen layouts. We wanted to maximise the display size, making it as easy to read as possible and include a battery level indicator and any other information a cox might need. We therefore looked at using a semi-circular LCD with the switches on the outer edge of the product. As requested by many coxes, this also allowed us to include a mute button. Once the visual design of the unit was finalised, we worked on its detailed mechanical design with the electronics being developed in parallel. We also designed an impeller with the aim of making it as practical and robust as possible. We then had its design analysed using computational fluid dynamics. Prototypes of all the parts were then made and tested, including a custom speaker design. Several changes were then made to improve things, including moving away from a standard microphone plug to a custom one to make it more robust and protect it from water damage when the microphone wasn't fitted. At this point, we also came up with the idea of stream compensation, which we patented to improve the accuracy of the GPS speed readings while moving water. The injection moulding tools for the plastic components were then organised, and when all the parts were ready, further testing, including EMC testing, was carried out. We then conducted extensive user testing as well as in-house life testing on different rigs. This included an immersion test in seawater for 24 hours and a battery life test on a reciprocating rig. Off the back of this, we then made a number of further changes. While early coxorbs proved to be at least as reliable as competitors' products, there were inevitably a few teething problems that we needed to address. And we can update older coxorbs with most of these changes, generally free of charge. Coxing microphones lead a very hard life, so we made four small changes to help them survive better if trodden on or submerged in water for hours on end. We initially had some problems with the battery seals in salt water, but completely solved these when we went to a custom silicon moulded design. The bought-in battery contact pins on some units could occasionally break contact in certain situations, so we designed custom gold-plated pins and made the connection to the PCB in a way that was tolerant of movement. Very early batteries could sometimes fail prematurely, so we moved to a different style of lithium polymer battery, and those completely solved the problem. The switches are operated by small marine grade stainless steel pushers, and even though these were under the front bumper, we have had occasions where one has been lost. The silicon seal for these was therefore redesigned to hold them more firmly in place. Don't forget to check out our other YouTube videos on our YouTube channel. Alternatively, head over to our website and subscribe to our monthly Rowing on the Web newsletter.